everyone. I'm Diane Davis and I'm an artist. I like to paint, draw, sculpt. I've been doing it my whole life on all kinds of mediums, on all kinds of surfaces. And I want to share with you one of my new favorites. Right now, I love to find stones, stones that are natural. And I love the shape of them to remind me of an animal and then paint the animal onto the stone so that I end up with a whole animal that covers all of the rock with no leftover space. One of the things that I like to paint is an elephant and I start with a stone like one of these and end up with something like one of these. I was thinking that you might like to come along with me and watch me as I start with the plain stone draw the elephant on it and start to paint it. And then when it's over, I hope that you're inspired to try one for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna prepare this stone to paint into an elephant. Um, let me talk about the stone itself. It's a good shape for an elephant. I can paint the back of it. I can, I can stand it up. It has a side where I can put the face so this will work. It has to really have an elephant feel to it for me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint a base coat on this rock because it's a little bit sandpaper-ish. And I'm gonna use gray. The gray is warmed up with a little bit of brown. So I used a basic store brand gray. And you can use any gray that you want to. And you don't have to even mix it with brown. I like doing that because elephants are never just a black and white gray. They always have a little bit of color. And you'll notice that I'm doing a dark shade of gray because you wanna start with the darker tones of the skin because you're gonna add texture to this elephant and lighter colors on top of it. And they won't show up if the bottom coat is too light. Whenever I'm doing animals, I always start with darker undercoats and go to lighter top coats. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and continue to paint this until the whole thing is covered. Now it's time to sketch the elephant onto the stone. To help me do a better job of that, I printed out a few reference photos off of the computer of elephants. This one really helps you see how the gray elephant has really got a lot of brown in it. Having the photos helps you know how to paint certain parts of the elephant and it doesn't have to follow the photo exactly. It's just a reference, like I said. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start sketching it in. Got like an ear here and his head, trunk. Trunk's gonna come around like that. Put another ear here and bring it around to the back. Add a tusk, another one, approximate location for the eye. The eye is shaped similar to a diamond. Here's part of what shows of the other eye. Its, face, its head is slightly turned, so you're not gonna see both of the eyes full on. And the front legs, which are gonna be tucked under it. So from this viewpoint, from the front, you're gonna see the knees right here. And from the bottom, you can see where the legs and the feet are. The tummy and now 
his knees are under him. You don't see much of any of the legs, but you do see his back feet poking out from under his tail and, and the tail will go right here. Now let's locate the backbone on the elephant. I always like to do that because it helps me when I'm drawing the pattern on the elephant to know where that is. Starts in the middle of the head here, curves around, goes all the way down to the tail. Okay. Now this is very not detailed. And that's okay. Also subject to change, that's why it's in chalk. Okay, now I think we're ready to start adding paint to this and start defining the areas that I drew. The next part of painting this elephant is to add different shades of gray to um, define the head, the ears, all the different parts of the elephant. I'm not gonna outline it in black yet or really outline it. Um, I'm going to maybe use some dark to emphasize some areas, but I don't like to outline. So what I basically do though, is I take my white, my black, my gray, brown, some yellow, maybe some reddish brown, and I mix them and make all different types of grays. I make of different varieties of gray. This is really my first video like this, so I'm a little bit nervous. You'll have to bear with me because it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be far from perfect, but I'm just hoping that you can learn from this. Now, the parts um, on the elephant that are really the lightest are on the face. It's where the light bounces off and reflects from the highest part of the animal. So, I'm gonna start adding some more brown to that, some more brown gray, but this is a lighter brown gray. And what I have to do is blend a lot because these are not just flat, clear-cut areas. These are areas that change one into the other color-wise. And some of you are good at that already, and some of you don't know how to do that. Which makes me think that if you want me to in the future, I can do a video just about blending and I can even do one about mixing, but that's for later.
This is where we add the details to the elephant. Elephants have a lot of wrinkles. They have a lot of texture to their skin. They have a lot of sags and bags and lines and all of those things give them a lot of character. And what I wanna do is show you how to, how to paint those and get you started on that. First, I wanna go ahead and work on the eyes because I like to get those done. They are the window of the animal, so to speak. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to those. They always look black in the photos, but if you look at a close-up of an elephant eye, it's brown. And I'm, I switched to a smaller brush now for the details, and I'm gonna go ahead and go around the outside of that eye again. And add the folds of skin around the eye. And under the eye. I'll do that for this one too. This is the little area that the tusk is gonna come from. Go ahead and add that in on both sides. And also just a tiny bit of white to the corner of the eye. Oops, I need to rinse my brush off. Somehow the little bit of white to the eye makes it seem open, more open. I'm gonna let that eye dry before I go back in and, and work on it some more. And then basically with the folds that are around the eye, those require lighter paint. So I'm basically doing a very light gray with some yellow mixed in. And I'm going to bring that lighter area down where it pretty much will connect with the tusk area. And I want to blend that with the rest of the with the rest of the trunk. I'm also lightening the brow some more. All of the areas that are light, I'm going to continue to lighten more and more as I go, building up layers. That's pretty much how I get my three-dimensional look on my animals. See how much more detail this has now? Go ahead and finish the eye. I'm 
I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow to the brown right here just to make it have a little bit more life. And then I'm going to add the iris. And now it's looking at you. Let me explain to you how I make the skin on the elephant. The skin on the trunk is ringed. And so I just take a little bit of light paint here and go down the trunk, making these little ringed areas closer together. And as the trunk turns the corner, the direction of those rings is gonna start turning up. And I'm going to take some brown and I'm going to make the folds right under the light areas here. There's a little shadow because the skin is folded there. So I'm going to just start adding that. And you see, oops, as you get further down, less of the detail shows on the trunk. Now, the face is a little bit on an elephant is a little bit convoluted. It has a little area right here on the forehead where it's kind of caved in. If you look at a photo of an elephant, you'll see it. And I think it's important to add that. As many, for me, as many of the details as I can borrow from real life and add, it helps with the realism of the total piece when it's finished. Now let's talk about the ears. The ears are lighter than the rest of the elephant and a little bit pinkish. There's an area right here, kind of in the middle of the ear where it's lighter. I'm gonna add a little bit of light paint here. It's kind of a pinkish gray. It's gray that I added kind of brown paint called burnt sienna too, which is just reddish brown. This area right here is where the ear 
attaches to the head. And then it folds over right here. And all of the little ripples in the ear meet at the outside of the ear. And then as you see that outside of the ear is not perfectly smooth. So we want to make sure that we add those little areas that are not smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other side. But first I want to show you some other things. Let me show you how to do the backbone. Well, The skin on the elephant's back is really bumpy and lumpy and textured. And it really would help you to have a photograph of what, an up close picture of what the skin looks like on an elephant for you to look at while you're painting the skin. And you can get as detailed as you want to with that, or you can go a little bit less detailed and make it kind of representational more. One thing that I'm not explaining this very well. Let me just show you. There's all these little folds here that come off of the back of the head. And they come all through the body. They go all the way. All through the body, they kind of fold down whatever direction gravity goes. <clears throat> and what I like to do is I like to draw as many of those folds in as I can. And then there's a kind of crisscross action going on. on the skin. But you want to make careful, be careful that you don't make it just look like a grid. So this is just, these are just guidelines, these lines. And this is how I begin to do the texture. So what I want to do is just fill in that little area that I did to show you how I do it. I just go inside of the little grid area with lighter paint and start, it's almost dotting and yet I'm trying really hard to fill the shape inside that grid. It's not perfect. But what I wanted, what I'm really trying to do is add texture and give the feeling of wrinkles and folds in the skin. Basically what I did was I continued to add the details like I showed you and I filled in the 
all of the little dots and shapes around the back. I did a lighter value for the backbone. I finished the tail. This side's pretty much just skin, um, but the legs are down here. You can see them, and so the skin folds, move toward the legs. And this was just a lot of more of the same of what I showed you. Around the eyes, I added light paint, more white. I added lighter paint to the top of the trunk to the highlights of the ears. And I went back with my fine brush and I actually added in those little rings on the, on the trunk. And so I still have to add the eyelashes on the, um, on the eyes. I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see it. The feet are not quite finished, I need to um, I need to finish those. The bottom is mostly finished. I really like to have the whole thing finished, but it's almost there. So this took me a lot of hours. That's why I didn't do it on, um, on film, but I did show you, I did tell you everything that I do do, but I'm sure you have questions and I, I know that this didn't really explain everything to you. So I want you to ask your questions in the comment section for me. And I also want you to suggest what you'd like me to do um, in the future. Like, would you like me to show you how I mix colors more specifically or how I blend my colors more specifically and just do shorter videos of those kinds of things or just a short video on how to do just a real detailed patch of elephant skin from start to finish. Um, let me know because I'm really open to suggestions. This was really hard for me to make because it was my first video. I threw away so much video and I actually ended up having to make six elephants trying to make this video. So now I have a whole herd of elephants and I'm gonna show them to you. <laughs> okay, here's I'll just lay them down so you can see them better. Little baby. I was using every rock I could find that would work. Another baby. Here's another one. I'm gonna stand this one up too move them all so you can see them all. I have never had this many elephants all together at once and I've never spent so many hours of my last two weeks working on elephants so I've had elephant therapy. I hope all of you enjoyed this and Leave, my com leave your comments again at the bottom and let me know what you thought. Thanks.